Now, let's take a look at HTTP messages. HTTP has two types of messages, request and response. HTTP messages are ASCII text and human readable. We see an example HTTP request message in this figure. HTTP request could be a lot shorter than this, like only a line, or it can contain a lot more than this message. Let's review important parts of this request message together. The first line is called the request line. It contains three fields. Method field, which is get here. HTTP version, which is 1.1 in this example. And the URL, which is slash index.html. The request line is followed by header lines. In the first line of the header lines, you can see the specification of the host address. So, if the TCP connection to server already exists at this stage, why do you think this host address is required? I will leave this for you to think about. Just a hint that it includes purposes like caching that we will see later. The next few lines of the header specify information about the browser to the server. The last line of the header lines, the connection, specifies the persistent or non-persistent connection option. If it says keep alive, the browser is requesting for persistent connection. And if it says close, it means the browser would go with non-persistent connection. Please also note that Carriage return and line feed are used to separate the request line from the header lines, as well as at the end of the header lines. The general format of an HTTP request is as shown in this figure. Request line with method URL version separated by space and followed by carriage return and line feed. Then the header lines each with header field name, value of that field, and carriage return and line feed. Then the entity body, which could be empty, as in method get, or have contents, as in method post. One of the fields in the HTTP messages is method, and we saw that it was set to get in the request message example we explored. So what are the method types? HTTP version 1, the original version, had methods get, post, and head. Get is used when client requests an object or sends a form that parameters entered for that form could be incorporated to the URL. The post method is used when the client is submitting a form. The entity body of the message in this case would include the information user has entered into the form. The head method is similar to get method, but it only requests information about the objects and not the objects themselves. HTTP 1.1, currently most widely used version of HTTP, also has methods put and delete additionally. Put allows the user to upload an object to the server, and delete allows the user to delete an object. Now, let's take a look at an example HTTP response message. The HTTP response message starts with a status line that is indicating the version of HTTP and a status code and a status phrase. Next, the header lines include information about the server like the date and timestamp of when response message was created, the content type and length, and if it has used a persistent connection or not. And if yes, how long it will keep the connection alive. The header lines are followed by the data part, which is the request that Status code in the HTTP response shows the status of the server response to the client request. If the request succeeded and the requested object is in the body entity, 200 OK is the status code and phrase. 
otherwise one of the error codes will be returned, among which I'm sure you are familiar with the famous 404 not found. This slide lists a few additional well-known HTTP response status code and phrases. For more complete list and the structure of the statuses, please refer to the HTTP 1.1 RFC. We analyze an HTTP request and an HTTP response. However, nothing is better than doing it for real yourself. Open a terminal and type telnet gaia.cs.umass.edu AD. This opens TCP connection to port AD, which is a default HTTP server port at the given server. Anything typed in from now on will be sent to port AD at the server. Then type a GET HTTP request, indicating the page, HTTP version, and the host again. By typing this, and hitting carriage return twice, you send this get request to web server. You will now receive the response and can analyze it the same way we did on the examples. You can also use Wireshark to look at HTTP requests and responses that are sent and received through your browser.